I know everybody, let's talk a little bit more about equations of state. And so first up is how uh, we should think about how equations of state are typically written. They are often written as sort of deviations from the ideal gas law. So uh, to begin with, we kind of assume the ideal gas law is right, and then we sort of apply factors to uh, compensate for the ways in which our fluid is different than the ideal gas law. And one of the ways in which we do this is most equations of state are written in terms of Z, uh, compressibility factor, or compressibility. And so Z is defined as PV divided by RT. So just think for a second, for every ideal gas, Z should be equal to what, no matter what the conditions? Z will be equal to one, right? All the time, Z will be equal to one for an ideal gas. So then when you look at the results from an equation of state, which is usually written as Z equals a whole bunch of math that is a factor of usually temperature and pressure and some physical constants, you get an idea how far your substance is from ideal gas behavior because you can compare what the number you have for Z to one. And so if it's 1.0002, you've got a nearly ideal gas. No point in bothering with an equation of state, probably. Uh, but if you plug in for Z and you come out with 17, yeah, that's kind of not ideal. So you should be using an equation of state. So you've probably noticed in this class, I am not that concerned with having you calculate by hand equation of state results. I am quite happy to let you use um, calculators such as Ping Robinson equation of state and HISIS to do this for you. Uh, and that's because very seldom will you be in the position of doing these calculations by hand. You'll be using them as, as part of a broader um, uh, computation. And so the most important thing for you to do is to be able to select which equation of state is appropriate for the system that you are trying to describe. So how do you do that selection? Well, one, you read about the assumptions that went into this, this particular equation of state, whatever it is, and you see, are they appropriate to your system? Two, you compare results to data. So you might not have complete data, but you probably have some, and does this equation of state capture that data when you compare? That's really good, you want that to happen. And then finally, if the other two things um, are, are not telling you everything you need to know, you also should check against, say, other equations of state. So you run the same calculation, three different equations of state, get about the same answer. You can have reasonable confidence that it's, it's probably okay. It's probably an acceptable answer. Uh, so uh, HISIS has a large number of equations of state, uh, as does ASPEN. Uh, all of the popular chemical engineering modeling packages do. Uh, but you can use uh, HISIS to explore different equations of state. Not only that, HISIS has a, uh, a little fact about each one where you can read a little bit about the assumptions that went into them. Let's do today's problem of the day. And uh, I want us to attack this problem from a variety of perspectives. So uh, hopefully we'll be able to calculate this a number of times within class time. So I want you to imagine that you have a can of whipped cream. Um, well, actually, it's a can of liquid cream, but it's been mixed with a gas, uh, in this case, nitrous oxide. And it's important to pay attention to nitrous, not nitric or something else. So nitrous oxide is the gas that's in here. And uh, that's at high pressure inside a spray can. And then as you uh, go through the valve, you throttle it to lower pressure through the valve, uh, the conditions change and the behavior of your material changes and you get whipped cream. So from the liquid cream to the whipped cream. And so inside the can, we're gonna assume it's 50 bar. Uh, and then outside the can, we're gonna assume it's one. That's a pretty big temp uh, pressure change. I don't think it's really quite that high in real life, thank goodness, but it's still a pretty substantial pressure change. And let's say we uh, have had this out of the fridge for a little while, so it's at 10 degrees Celsius, and we want to know what's the temperature um, at the outlet for this uh, nitrous oxide um, if it is not an ideal gas. Uh, so you might want to work out what it would be if it was an ideal gas, just for comparison purposes. Uh, so I want you to write this energy balance. It's an energy balance you know because it's for a valve. 
then I want you to solve that energy balance, uh, imagining it was an ideal gas. That should be reasonably quick. Then I want you to use the Peng-Robinson equation of state and see uh, through the calculator. Uh, and I want you to see what temperature you get when you apply that equation of state. And then I want you to see, um, and we'll spend, uh, if we're in the classroom, uh, we'll do this all together. Um, otherwise, we'll space it out when the people get computer access. I want you to try uh, what happens uh, if you use HiSys to try and answer this question. Uh, what kind of results do you get from that when you apply different equations of state than Peng Robinson? And what do we think is the truth? What is the actual result and how would we check that result? So think through how you would confirm if what you've just calculated is an accurate representative, uh, accurate representation of reality.